yeah, so as I got older, I would play a little trick and I'll see people and I'll clutch my purse. So they can feel uncomfortable. Mm. That's what I do. Or just take your, your shoes off like you're about to start running. Like, like I'm, I'm scared. Just, like, like, so like what you gonna do, you criminal? No, oh my God. <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's the Demachettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I wasn't glad to find out I'm gone. I'm a Kobo woman. Sorry to see this, but I was very promiscuous. My brother wanted to marry a car, she was like, mm -hmm. can't do it. Because a typical Ashanti man is not all. We make statements about groups of people we don't know or hardly ever encounter. On the show, we hear from the people themselves to find out if those statements are truth or myth. All the tall people. It's a lot of agrees. Agree. Somebody said you see when Tohaze tried to conquer them and actually succeeded. <laughs> they tried to undermine him with their beautiful women. And so cross breeding and oh. mixing. Me, I heard that in the olden days. The Ashanti is like very short and um, I think very dark as well. So, and they are conquered in north, so they have slaves, no offense, so they have slaves. So then they started sleeping with the slaves. The dogos from the north who came to her, yeah, and mm. impregnated some of the women there, gave them that balance, so, yeah. Okay, according mm. to what um, the Asante Hine said, he said there was a point in time in Ashanti history whereby they had to marry off um, a princess of Ashanti to a northern prince and so um, there was this um, cross breed you know for lack of better word of course they get tall people because a typical Ashanti man is not tall yeah, I think uh. we got shot. okay we learned something <laughs> he disagreed <laughs> uh. oh. how true that is I also don't know how true that is, but people say that Kobo girls are promiscuous. Yeah, they are promiscuous, but I don't know anything. I haven't experienced that. Yet. I don't know what Kobo she went to do. That. I like that. I, I, I disagree no because experience. I know a couple of Kobo women who are not promiscuous at all. Um, and But yes, I can understand where the sentiment is coming from because I no, know that's a good way to look at it though. Women who are also very mm. promiscuous. But it's it's the same thing. Yeah, it it cuts across all tribes. You find places where people are like yeah. very promiscuous, and others are really not that promiscuous. I think it's more about uh, nature and it's, uh, nature. Not it's not something that they've been cursed with. It's just um, it depends on the environment you you grow in. We usually say it depends on the environment you grow up in, but also it depends on the nature of the environment you grow up in. Right. It's like kind and, of the same thing. You and know? sometimes just that person. You yeah. know, you can have a whole family two parents raised a whole family of girls mm -hmm. all of the girls but one you know one is promiscuous or it could be the other way around promiscuous is not a purpose though it's not like a purposely thing like yeah but i don't I think mean, women does people, it on purpose you never know some people that's just it, like what's a good example i can say is it more so well, yeah, yeah, okay. I was trying to make it seem like it could also be depending upon the guy, on how he just view yeah, her. Yeah, but they, the topic is about women. But it's about women, right? So yeah. I think it's I, 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 I think women just have some natural things about themselves that makes them come off as that. But I don't think they're promiscuous. What about men? I mean, no, no. Okay, again, oh, okay, the, topic, the topic is the about topic. a woman. <laughs> what are you doing? So we haven't um, learned anything about the Krobo, um ethnic group. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, y'all know what to do. I'm a Kobo woman and I can take a lot of pride in that. My Twitter handle says that. I don't believe that because um, 
from what I've heard, he was having taking his bath and some two people ladies saw him, made fun of him and he cares them. Who was there to come and tell the story? If it was only two mm-hmm. women, like think about it, right? Okay. And I mean or they are where the answer and that's okay, we don't mind. I was, I was going to pick two. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> a, female, a famous person is in town. My person is mm. How famous are you? From what I have experienced, mm. I think to a certain degree, it is true. Because um, the Kubo people that I have come into contact with, sorry to say this, but are very promiscuous. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't. Wait, sorry, you mean promiscuous? I think. They sleep around, or oh, they yeah. just like sex and they are good at it. Oh, they like sex and they are good at it, and they also like sleeping. I, I was just talking about how a woman can easily in, in, in treat, and treat a man mm-hmm. that way. I was talking about her doing things, going crazy. I wasn't. Yeah, she she's talking about th- they talking about doing things. Oh, to we, we took it there. Another level, and oh, obviously, okay. guys, that's why we open all of our um reactions with this is an American reaction. Of course, we're not familiar with what they're talking about, mm-hmm. but you know. So for them, it's like basically sense. it's so their term is not going to be a hundred percent as our term. They're like mm-hmm. so because as y'all see, I thought they meant like borderline. Yeah, like, yeah. She walking down the, through the store. And she twisting the hips extra hard. Yeah, type of yeah. Stuff, you know they, what I'm saying? T- they talking about actually <laughs> going. A B C. Okay, put on post. <laughs> All the way to Z. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's what from my experience that's what has been the case. Okay. Whereby um there was I don't want to mention him, but there was a certain girl in a school in my former school who was quite famous for her sexual oh, yes. And she, she was a pro bull. Yes, and a roommate of mine was also a pro bull guy who was quite the playboy. So oh. in a way I think they capitalize on their um physical features. They are quite beautiful, really. They have yeah, voluptuous is. bodies and stuff Boom, like that. Boom, borderline. I thought that's what was just They capitalize on that and but they, they use it to the advantage. And so, oh. to some, it may seem like the case is working. I don't entirely believe in the case. Greens have the most pride in their power. Oh. power black man. Uh-oh. I feel like they know what to say with this. He oh. disagree on everything. Him too. Him too. I wonder if they're from the same ethnic group. Right. Every, every single time. I just two days ago, cracking an egg. You say something, cut a chicken's head. <laughs> Come on. Uh, and every it's, time it's uh, you go to an every man's house, there's some black and red something tied somewhere. And nobody wants to play with the number nine. Oh man. We love the e We know how to play. We have nothing bad. Yeah, so if you need to play in this village, there is that shit. And nobody wants to mess with the oldest. If you go to an Ewe village, like in the Walter region, nobody wants to mess with the oldest man in that region. You don't, you see him, you go to the left or go to the right. You don't approach him, you don't look in his eyes. What? It's like a It is. If he's saying it's just a cliche, it's just a cliche, yeah. It's just a cliche. It's a cliche. I have a lot of Ewe friends. I have those lady friends that. Like, I mean, Carla talks, we just be like, hey, you, I'm calling the talk with my family. I'll sit on our family room and I'll come and visit you. You know, it's a joke and everything. I get it. I know she's not serious about it. But um, they take pride in it. I think, for me, I don't even think it's a bad thing. What um, other tribes or other people meant to um, ridicule them or to paint them black, they now wear it with pride. So we like black magic. That's okay. We have it. I'll scare you with it. Personally, I think the northness are more powerful than the Ewe. They are very confident about it. Like, it gives them this kind of, I don't know, kind of bragging rights and, you know, sure. I've been to a shrine festival before and they are so proud, like, when they are talking about it, you see, yeah. they mention sure. the name with some kind of, some kind of they even told me to leave my camera on the street and go to wherever I was going and come, nobody will take it. It's true. The moment mm. I mention the name, hey, they were even there. No, right. There was the things they can do. <laughs> Boy, the things they can do. So my take on things of this nature is um I find it interesting if you accept like if a person is honest with you so you can like just fully accept them for who they are instead of them lying in front of you mm-hmm. and you having to find out they're doing these things. 
around the bushes, but they're right, they're right. trying to paint themselves not to be that. I'll accept you more if you're honest with me instead of right. coming to me and lying about the things that you do and how you do it and reasons you do it for, and then I have to find out some other way. You know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like, in a way, that's a form of religion for some people. Okay, you know? yeah, and again, that, not to cut you off, I wouldn't, like, there's certain things that I just would not mess with, but if mm -hmm. you're honest with me, mm -hmm. for instance, if you're a thief, right, I know not to bring you around certain things mm. because not you're taking you to my house. I'm not gonna paint you black and say that you're a bad person. <laughs> right. Right. You right. got some problems you gotta work on. Right. But if you're honest about it then I can help you and I can understand you and I can you know it's a history behind trauma. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, um I I'm feel like, like magic trauma but Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um in society, no matter where you are, no matter what culture, if someone does something that's different from you People tend to look down on that person yep, without fully yep. understanding what it is. So I, I feel like that's kind of what it is. Like, you know, us being who we are, um, believing in the things we believe in, people may, you know, feel feel a certain type of way about that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people are just so judgmental. Yeah. Oh, but now, now, they talk about black magic. Mm -hmm. Now, if what they doing out there is making people really run away and move around, then that's different. That's different. Just keep your distance. That's it what is. I understand. I mean, you truthful, but I got to keep my distance because yeah. I see the results. Yeah. I'm not with it. I yeah, don't know. but you can't be scared of something you don't know about. But at the same time, if it's not benefiting, you know what I'm saying? If it's mm -hmm. like something that's harmful or something like I'm just saying, speaking of yeah. reference, if it's I mean, harmful or anything like that. If you don't believe in it, you just don't believe in it. We but, cool from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know what I'm saying? There's some barriers and levels that you got to respect. But respect people's cultures and respect it at the same at time. The end of the day. At the end of the day, you still got respect. Yeah. No demand. It's, it's like almost instant. You know, when, sometimes it's even benign if there's anything like that. But you know, you know the person does not really mean it. But then they do say something offensive or do something offensive. And then when you want to talk about it, you say, oh, but you people, that's how you people mm -hmm. are. Or that's how you people are like. Is that not how your people are? There are no trees there. You know, he's never crossed his, the border to his place. Anyway, but it's it's just something that I, I've grown I've grown up to to I think learn to ignore because I know most of it comes from a place of ignorance. They don't know. Um, jokes about promiscuity. I and mean, sometimes you meet some people and some think it's the smartest opening line. Like, oh, hello, hi. Um, sometimes I use my middle name. I'm Mateko. So I, I say, well, I'm asking, oh, hi, um, are you going No, I'm Kobo. Oh, is it true? I'm not check You're like, okay. And um, I don't think that's discrimination. At initial, I used to get offended a lot. But, like, I'm not sure what you think. Eh? What you say, whatever you're thinking is, whatever you're thinking is true. Whatever you're thinking is true. Then we move. So, yeah, but I've never been discriminated against. No? Mm, I have, <clears throat> in terms of, um, when I came to Accra first, um, I wanted to rent a room and I was looking around, you know, Pukwasi and you know, the places where the rent is cheap. And wherever I went, the first question that popped up was, what tribe are you? <laughs> yes, it's true. I'm not even kidding. And when you mention your name, they'll be like, okay, what's your name, Derek? Before, okay, what tribe are you? Then you'll be like, I'm a shanty. They was like, mm. Then they will talk in their lo local language to another person. Then the person will say, No, 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 There's no. Room. So they will have to, you know, refuse you the room or whatever. It's fortunate or mm. unfortunate. I, I don't really have any experience with discrimination because many a times where I find myself, it's a shanty that can't. Not because I want to, but because it's just there. But I realize that with the Northness, with the LS, with. Um, people that come from places that you don't really know of or you really heard of. Okay, so of course, you know, um, the United States have a lot of, of course it wouldn't be tribes, it would be based on race. Um, and there's more than one story that we can tell and we're not going to go there. Um, but I feel like the first guy, he was saying um, how the people would say, you people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We deal with that a lot. And I've shared on how um, I used to work with a person and they say, oh, you're not like those, like those people. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Like, like, what are those people? Like, I feel like in every culture... There's going to be ignorance everywhere. There's going to be, you know, people who just 
or the stereotype of that race or tribe or whatever it is. Yeah. I feel like that's just global, you know. And it is. You shouldn't approach people with your prejudices and biases. But like, you got to see it, though. What do you mean? Some people don't really see it. Like, for instance, an example that I can use is a man and a woman can be walking down the street on the sidewalk and some a man could be coming towards them. All right. I got to paint it out for you guys to understand it, right? They're walking on the inside of the, of the sidewalk and the man coming towards them is walking along the sidewalk near the street. Mm -hmm. The woman can be on the same side that the man is walking with, walking on the side of the street. Husband or man, have a like, let's get from the street, walking this side, mm -hmm. especially because another man coming. That's levels of respect. That's not right. discrimination. But right. if the man coming towards them and the woman is there walking, she clutches her purse and she up and get behind her, her dude or something like that, she instantly discriminated this man because she she painted him out to be something she have no idea. Right. This dude can be a lawyer walking because his car didn't exactly. break down and he need gas somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So um, I used to deal with that a lot, um, you know, from the projects. Yeah, we I used know to deal it. with that a lot as a child. We be outside. And I've never stolen anything from anybody. Like, yeah, I've dealt with that as a child. So as you a adult. You picked flowers as a little girl? Yes. You give it back? To the earth. <laughs> I'm playing. God gave I'm it to playing. us. I'm playing. Okay. But, um, okay. Um, yeah, so as I got older, I would play a little trick and I'll see people and I'll clutch my purse so they can feel uncomfortable. Let's mm. not do it. I'll just take your, your shoes off like you're about to start running. Like, like I'm, I'm just, scared. Like, like what you gonna do, you criminal? No, oh my god. <laughs> Never. I have. Oh, wow. I have. I mean, um, that was, that's one time I talking to someone and person got to find out I'm gone and the interest and all that the person was supposed to do for me just went off like that because of my tribe where I'm coming from so yeah. sometimes I find it difficult telling people my tribe. I don't find it difficult like when I tell people I'm a fancy they get more interested like fancy girls I've heard they are good cooks look how good like their interest rather grows so I don't really I like I, could I, I tell it proudly. No, I don't have nothing for my tribe. Uh, I say I'm gone. and some someone ah you guys are too loud, you are too vulgar, you are no. too yes. Yeah. I also think they like I'm dying. I'm already okay. <laughs> You see, and we use that term, find your tribe, mm -hmm. out here. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when you find your tribe, these people are going to accept you for who you are. Yeah. Right? And then when you have people that's outside your tribe that don't accept you for who you are, then you know they're not for you. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's just simple. Like, you, you never should hide who you are, regardless yeah. if it's a tribe, something Definitely. that you're, your location, where you're from, your city, your state. Like, never hide who you are. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, I always, like, I have a few. I, I had a few of those today too. Right, but I want to say it or not. People, um, when we started to react to the content that we reacted to, reacting to now, a lot of people started to get uncomfortable, and we have never deviated from who we are, what we believe in. Um, yeah, we're we positive people. Right. We look through things through an unbiased, unjudgmental lens, and at the end of the day, we're always going to be. 100% unapologetically black and proud of it. Um, so I felt like people, you know, a good bit of people appreciated us wanting to, you know, showcase who we are and the things that we relate to. Your transparency so. helps people. Yeah. Well, so again, I think it's something many northern people from of northern descent can identify with because, you know, if you go through a history of either probably being conquered or being the conquered or having to migrate from uh, obviously the poorer parts of the country to come and work in the richer parts of the country, there's always going to be a form of discrimination. So, for instance, people meet me and then after interacting with me for like days or weeks, some have even known me for years, and when they find out that, oh, I'm of Northern descent, they're like, ah, you're a Northerner. I'm like, what does that even mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like, what what do you mean by, ah, you're a Northerner? Because then that sort of changes the entire perspective. You were really relating with me well, until you found out I was a Northerner. How is that a problem? Man, just trying right? to so sometimes you may feel like, look, I don't need to mention where I'm from, because the point is, 
I'm Chris. Yeah. Right. Chris and Agao doesn't really matter in this particular context. My, my tribe, we are we are like you know that Akan is one of the largest so mm. once you tell somebody you are an Akan, first part of Akan, like it, they want to find out I've never been discriminated against for being an Akan. Talk about it. Talk about it. Yes. My mother. Yes, I say my mother like this. She, she she tells you indirectly, but you know it's for you. Yeah. And can put it. My my. I befum the new put it. I can't say like that. I find it like the third one. So my mother wanted to marry a guy. She was like, can't. <laughs> she said, ah, I feel like. Let them talk about it. I'm gonna just do this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You should, you should so, yeah. reconsider. But, but for me, it's true. My my parents, going. especially my mom, she would not, she would not allow any any girl from the the area. Uh, I mean the Bota region. She's so not fan of. Make sure you don't bring an airway woman to this house. I don't know the reason, but... Even with that, my mom doesn't like Ashanti men. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get my soul. Yes, we can do that. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree because even now you have families or people who are deeply rooted in whatever believe and yep, they yep. pass that thought and things onto their offsprings like their yep. young ones and it still goes on and on no matter what we do this thing has been there since that is why we have to try and change it because growing up we all had the same perception i don't want to play with an era child i don't want to associate with a grandchild but you growing up in this era and you you still want to be associating with what your forefathers and I don't know. They but are not in this generation. The, the, the only time we can change it is when people stop passing that thoughts and stuff onto their young ones. Yeah. Until then, we can. Yeah, but I think now it's changing because now the, the cultural marriages are becoming more. People are going to unexpected places. Like, mm. yeah, you have the, they are, the marriages are. Mm. So it will change, but it will take time. Yes, uh, honestly, I don't think it can be eradicated, at least not in an African context, unless we are looking to engage in a large scale genocide. Uh, because as an African people, we identify strongly with our tribes, our small cultural groups. And it will take a lot of social engineering, which I don't see happening anytime soon, uh, for us to completely eradicate um, uh, tribalism. We may reduce it to if you will, safe levels, where it's not as distractive as it can be. But it would always be there. There will always be that element of, I'm from here, and these are my people. Unless we decide to kill off like half of our population, mm -mm. I think. If, the, if our generation is actually going to do that, I think unconsciously we are invested into doing that. Because if you're going to raise up your child, if I'm going to raise up my son or my daughter, I'm not going to be pushing into her head that you are this particular um, tribe. Yes, you, you should know you are from this particular tribe. You should be proud of it, but it shouldn't be to a point where you demean another tribe. Mm. I'm just saying that if we all accept each other's tribe and love each other as ourselves, we can eradicate it. Like how my mom said, I sent it for you, she just needs someone to educate him more that there are people who are shanties who are not like that so it can be eradicated yeah and it's all about creating awareness and proper education i love oh, where what, you uh, oh. <laughs> i love what she said at the end because i feel like we are living of course i'm speaking of the united states of america we are living martin luther king's jr's dream mm -hmm. right where 
we all can we're, come together. We're finally to a place where we can come together. Of course, yeah. there's people who, like one of them said, they pass on, you know, their beliefs to their offspring. So, you know, people still think that we live in the, you know, in that time and we're not. Yeah. But I feel like us who are unapologetically black and proud and we know our history and we know our struggles, especially being raised in the South with parents and grandparents who went through the struggle. Mm -hmm. Again, I'll share it time and time again. My grandmother missed slavery by 67 years. Right, right, right. Meaning she walked this earth. My grandmother is still living. She walked this earth with people who were enslaved. Understand that. So for us to be who we are, and to have white friends, have Mexican friends, have friends of different cultures, and be anti-racist, it can happen. Yeah. But, of course, we know we're de dealing with a whole different type of climate. But because of the type of climate that used to be in the United States, if it can happen here, it can happen anywhere. Right. Everything, Without genocide. Everything, everything is going to continue to evolve and grow. Right. And I feel like as people, we need to be... In the same time frame, the same time loop with that. So we was to always take what our people would put on us and tell us that we have to be, we have to walk this straight line. Mm -hmm. We won't make it over to the other side of what life has to offer. And when right. I say make it over, I'm talking about with how things are operating now. As you can see, these babies coming up and and it's same out there. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is going to be still following the same roots mm -hmm. and traditions, um, but to know it. And to right. evolve it, you know what I'm saying, right. is more beneficial. I right. feel it's more helpful because you're still in the, you still like working both sides of the picture. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, teaching your children to be acceptive of other people, regardless if they agree or not, mm -hmm. regardless if that's their way of life or not. Like we can be in a room with a Muslim, we can be in a room with an atheist, we mm -hmm. can be in a mm -hmm. room with, um, you know, people of all different types of religions, and and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just don't try to push your beliefs on other people. Um, but but you still got to remember where you came from, because what that teaching, what mama taught, what daddy taught, is going to help you cope in those rooms. Right. It's going to have you help understand what's but going on in But we are in a time where we have our own minds, and if, hey, I don't really like that religion that I grew up in. I could change it. You it's can yeah, you can relearn a lot. Yeah. Right. But of course, we're, we have an American perspective, you know, so yeah. we know things are different there. But yeah, this is very interesting. Right, right. Um, always love learning about Ghana. And of course, you know, with the history of our people, I saw a lot of people on this video who look like people I know. And it was beautiful to see. I saw one for real. Yeah, beautiful to see. So. We enjoyed this video. We hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction request through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.